It's a hadith that's narrated by Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. He says that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu and he said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give him advice. And he told him not just to make it short, but he said, I really want some impactful advice. I want straight advice. And the Prophet sallallahu he said, when you stand up to pray, pray as if it is your last prayer. That's the first one. The next advice, don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. I love that. The third thing, lose hope in what other people possess. So let's go through these. Number one, pray as if it's your last prayer. Now, one of the most common questions that I get is, how do I gain khushur, humility in my prayer? But I want you to think about this. When you do get distracted in prayer, what are you usually distracted by? The thoughts of what you have to do after prayer. So you're thinking beyond the prayer and therefore not enjoying the prayer that you're in. So you rush it, you forget which rak'ah you're on all the time, you get lost in your surahs because you're not really there. You're going through the motions, but your mind is engaged in another activity. And the activity that your mind is engaged in is usually the worldly activity that will follow that prayer. So your prayer is an interruption in your day as opposed to being an essential element of your day and the most important part of your day because it concerns the most important relationship of your life and it is the most important thing that you will be asked about on the day of judgment. And usually you're thinking about what's next in the day. And the Prophet ﷺ gives you a very simple advice and it's very efficient. Don't think beyond the prayer and remind yourself, hey, this could be the last time that I get to stand before Allah in this life and then meet Him standing before him in the hereafter, asked about how I used to stand before him in this life. This is my last job interview with Allah, effectively. And if it's the last time, and it's the first thing I get asked about in the akhirah, the hereafter, then I really, really need to focus and make this right. Pray as if it's your last prayer. The second advice, don't say something today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. That life advice would save marriages, it would save friendships, because when you are in the midst of an argument, you try to say the most hurtful thing that you can in the moment because you're focused on winning the argument with the assumption that there will be a moment of reconciliation. So let me get my hardest punch in now. Let me say the, the most hurtful and damaging thing now. Later on, I'll come back and I'll fix it all. Assuming that there will be a later on. I've seen people who died right after an argument and the family member that they had that argument with, they never forgave themselves. Catch yourself and think it through and ask yourself, would I be willing to sleep with this? Would I be willing for this to be the last conversation? SubhanAllah, there was a, a brother, his last interaction with his mother was just that, a fight. And after she passed away, he went into deep depression. And every time I'd go to the graveyard, I'd pretty much see him there and he's buying flowers and putting stuff on her grave. And it's like that one sweet word, he would say this, would have saved him all of that because he wouldn't have had that on his conscience. Don't put that on yourself, especially by the way, this is like the best marriage advice ever, <laughs> especially when it comes to your spousal relationships. And this is probably where Hollywood deceives us quite a bit because in the movies, right, there's always at some point, somebody yells at somebody, they have this time away from each other, but then everything's going to come all back together at the end of the movie. But what if the movie stops there in the middle, which is the way that life often does. The last one is the one that a lot of people have a hard time understanding. Lose hope in what other people possess despair in what other people possess. How much of your stress, how many of your thoughts at night have been occupied by you feeling insufficient in this dunya because you don't have something that someone else has and that's not always something that's material. And because of that, you're sad, you're lonely, you're stressed out, and you're not able to focus on building what's really important. Shaitan has a great way of making us feel insufficient with regards to what we possess of this world. You cannot be productive in your pursuit of the hereafter unless you're content with what you have in this dunya. There is absolutely no way around it. You can maintain excellence in your pursuit of the world and your pursuit of the hereafter, but you cannot pursue the hereafter unless you're content with what you already have in this world. At night, what occupies your thoughts in those last moments tells you a lot about who you are. When I'm going to sleep at night and I'm spending those last 15, 20, 25 minutes trying to put myself to sleep, what are the thoughts that are keeping me up at night? Is it a thought that maybe I have not done enough with what Allah gave me for the pursuit of His pleasure? Is it the thought that maybe I'm falling short in the rights 
that people have upon me, including my family? Is it the thoughts that I need to wake up, force myself to wake up a few minutes before Fajr at least and channel all of that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to set my day right? Or is it the thought of my bank account, the thoughts of what I don't have? What are those thoughts that are stressing you out at night? They'll tell you a lot about yourself because they can be very shallow. So go back to the advice. It starts with Salah. Guard your prayer because if you lose that, then you lose everything else. Because if you get that relationship right, it should translate into priorities and into a better relationship across the board. Not just your relationship with Allah, but your relationship with your family, your relationship with the people closest to you, and your relationship with the world around you. Pray as if it's your last prayer. Don't say things today that you would have to apologize for tomorrow. Ask yourself the question in the midst of that argument, hey, as I'm speaking, is this something I will have to apologize for? Because I can't take for granted that I'll have the chance to apologize and lose hope in what other people possess and to aspire for more in a way that would build that which comes after this life that is eternal, that is everlasting, that is where everything that you have planted in this life will certainly come to fruition.